Thank you all for um, letting us come and just share a little bit about what God is doing in our lives. And I'm really nervous, so I thought I wouldn't be nervous the second service, but there's more of you now, so no, I think I'm more nervous. But So please bear with me. <clears throat> um, my desire to follow the Lord really started when he allowed me to lose what I thought was the most important thing in my life. What I thought was the most ugly and awful thing that could ever happen to me, God redeemed and made beautiful. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I clung to this scripture during that time, and God's promise held true. He was faithful then as he continues to prove his faithfulness in my life. When I felt like I had lost everything, Jesus was all I had left. And when Jesus is all you have left, you realize that Jesus is all that you really need. His relentless pursuit of me and willingness to do whatever severe things it took to have me by his side and totally satisfied in him is what really resonated in my soul. This took my head knowledge that Jesus paid it all for me from simply being in my head to consuming my heart and my very existence. I understood that God loves me because of his grace alone and nothing to do with me earning his love. It was a compulsion of grace that changed my life and made me want to share his love by living my life for him instead of myself. I prayed and asked the Lord to show me what to do. Through a quick series of events, he put a passionate desire in my heart to go to Africa and visit orphans. My church showed a video about Katie Davis, a young woman living in Uganda, which led me to go by and read her book, Kisses from Katie, which is the same book that Pastor David was talking about. I knew that God wanted me to go to Africa. I contacted her ministry to see if I could volunteer with them, and they put me in contact with an organization called Visiting Orphans. I signed up to go on the next trip to Uganda and Rwanda in the summer of 2012. This is where I met Pastor David and his wife, Sharon, who were prompted to go to Africa after reading the same book, Kisses from Katie. I experienced so many intense emotions on this short-term mission trip, and my life would never be the same. During this time, our team visited many different orphanages and spent time loving and sharing the gospel with many children. Before leaving for this trip, I spent much time asking the Lord to break my heart for what breaks His and to show me what He wants me to do about it. I didn't want to raise thousands of dollars to go to Africa for two weeks and then resume my normal way of my comfortable American life unchanged. God more clearly answered this prayer than any other request I've ever laid before him. I met John in his huge Rwandan orphanage amongst about 600 other orphans. An adoption entered my world without me even knowing. John's biological mother was struck by lightning and killed as she was holding him, leaving seven-month-old John with no family able to care for him. According to his grandmother, this lightning incident burned his eyes and caused him to be blind. Since she could not care for him, she took him to the orphanage, leaving him in the hands of others. John has told me how he sees all of this as a blessing and part of God's sovereign and perfect plan for his life. Although John can't physically see, I believe that he sees the things of God more clearly than I ever will. I got to spend only a few hours getting to know John and witness his intense love for Jesus, contagious joy for life, and tender compassion for others. I learned of John's passion to grow in his education and to serve Christ by sharing the gospel through his gift of composing and singing music. I also learned of his chronic eye pain and helping him just felt like the obvious thing to do. I left Rwanda with a heavy heart and a call from God to be John's eyes in his journey to America. I encountered much discouragement, although I'm sure it was well meant, but the Lord also encouraged me and affirmed this call through family, 
friends, some of which I hadn't even met in my time in his word. A few months into this journey, in the middle of one of our poorly connected phone calls, John called me mom. Then he asked me if it was okay for him to call me mom, and I knew that he was mine forever. I can't explain the joy that filled my heart upon discovering that he thought of me as his mom. Although I had no idea I would be his mother when we first met at his orphanage, I would not have it any other way and simply cannot imagine my life without him. However motherhood comes to you, it is a gift from God, and I must say that I feel blessed beyond all measures to call John my son. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. 1 John 3, one. That's one of my favorite verses and reminders of how God has adopted me into his family. So many people told me I was crazy and should not do this because I didn't know what it would turn out like, nor did I have the financial means to take this on. Thankfully, the Lord called my sister to join me in this journey, and she adopted John as her nephew and immediately began praying for him and communicating with him weekly. I believe she wanted John to be here almost as badly as I did. This process took over two years and required many steps that seemed completely impossible. But nothing is impossible with our God. People began to donate money and connect me with doctors. My attorney decided to do the rest of John's case pro bono after only two meetings with me. I won an award at my job that was the exact amount I needed to hire my attorney in Rwanda and pay for my outrageous international phone bills. I was even able to support John from afar and make sure that he had clothes and food and basic needs as any mother would want to do for her son. I could go on and on about all of the ways God provided and lavished me with blessings and surprises. If you just say yes to what he puts in front of you and do the next right thing, he is faithful to multiply beyond what you can imagine. John got here in October of last year, and two months later in December, his orphanage closed down. This gave us grounds to keep him here permanently, as he would have nowhere and no one to return to. These 11 months have been the most joyful season of my life so far. The Lord continues to provide and teach us so much through this journey we are on together. I had no idea what God had in store for me when I got the news that John got his visa to come here. I did anticipate much love and joy, but the Lord has exceedingly surpassed all that I could have hoped for. That being said, there are, of course, some challenges and difficulties, but God continues to be faithful and brings us through them. And with that comes much healing and restoration. I see how beautifully John is growing into a young man that ferociously loves and serves God, all as a result of God's grace. It has been so sweet to be able to experience God's provisions in ways that are beyond my imagination since John has been here. I honestly didn't know exactly how I would be able to provide for myself and John, as well as homeschool him and go to school myself. But I think that's exactly how God wanted it. His glory seems to shine so bright when he uses people like me who need help and are unqualified. I feel like my family has just become so much bigger. If I was self-sufficient and didn't need any help, Others wouldn't get to experience the blessing of blessing us, and I think that really pleases God to see his people come together and help each other. And, um, and my sister made a little slideshow of John's life since he's been here, so we'll just show that. Thank you.
find my way. I wonder if my life could really change at all. All this earth, could all that is lost ever be found? Could a garden come up from this ground?
sunrise The colors of the morning are inside your eyes The world awakens in the light of the day I look up to the sky and say you I see your power in the morning light Where planets are in motion And galaxies are bright We are amazed in the light of the stars It's all proclaiming who You bled and, and you died and you rose again for me. Now you are sitting on your heavenly throne. Soon we'll be coming home. You're beautiful. I want us to, uh, so blessed, amen. This is the year of worship. This is worship, spirit and in truth. Um, let's just bless, uh, just pray a blessing over Amy and John. Uh, God has clearly been with them, and he's going to be with them. But let's just pray for God's hand of blessing. God's going to multiply uh, their testimony for the glory of God. Let's pray for his provision, his protection, his leading, his guiding, um, if you feel led in your heart that you want to partner together with hope in his vision, you want to support, you know, follow the Lord's leading there, let's just extend our hands towards uh, John, our brother John, and Amy. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. Let's just call on the Lord. Lord, we thank you. We call down blessing right now. Father, we call down all of heaven's blessings, Father, over this precious, precious mother and son, Father, in your kingdom. Lord, we just join our hearts together right now in faith. Lord, release, release, release. Where two or three 
agree in your name, Father, it shall be done. And we're just coming in agreement right now for the release of your glory in increasing measure. Hallelujah. And I'll pray for them. Father, we thank you, Lord, for sending John and Amy here to, uh, to us today to share their story and to share their worship, Lord. And Lord, we know that before John was even born in his mother's womb, you knew him and you called him, Lord, to be a worshiper, to be a prophet to the nations. And so, Lord, we just pray for your favor, Lord, let him grow, grow every day in your grace and truth, in the favor with God and with man. And we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that's going to touch people around the world. So we pray, protect him, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over him. Pray your angels will watch over him, Father God. Lord, continue to guide him. Let him just feel your smile. You're smiling over him, Lord. We thank you, Lord, and we lift up Amy, Father. Lord, we're so blessed by her step of obedience, which has led to this today. And Father, we thank you that you will provide all her needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. Father, do above and beyond what she can ask or imagine. And Father, we pray protection over her, Father God. Just continue to give her support, emotional support, spiritual support, financial support. Give her the resources from heaven, Lord. All those resources that belong to you, Father, release to her for the glory of God. Her heart, she is your disciple. She has said yes to follow you, God. And look where you've brought her, Father, here today to testify to your faithfulness and your goodness. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give another hand.